Good evening. Welcome to the second monthly Charlotte Sister Cities virtual forum. This evening, we're going to bring to you Krefeld, Germany, which is Charlotte's second uh, sister city uh, relationship, which was started 34 and a half years ago. Before we get going, I would like to welcome uh, the students who are out there listening this evening. We have students from 10 schools who are in our audience, from Carmel Middle School, from Charlotte Christian, Charlotte Country Day School, Metrolina Regional Scholars Academy, Hickory Grove Christian, Weddington High School, Myers Park High School, CPCC, Davidson College, and UNC Charlotte. We're glad you're all with us this evening. As we get started, I'd like to share with you a little information about Charlotte uh, Sister Cities. Uh, we are right now in the process of restarting, uh, but we I came together about a year ago, uh, even though we're nearly 58 years old, uh, since our first Sister Cities relationship with Arequipa, Peru. Uh, but thanks to support uh, from the community, from our steering committee, and from our community partners who you see listed here, uh, we have been able to grow and we welcome your involvement. So thank you this evening to International House, to the Charlotte International Cabinet, to World Affairs Council, uh, who is allowing us to use their, uh, their webinar platform to host this evening's event, to Sumpner Packaging, to Charlotte International Rotary Club, to the Charlotte uh, North Rotary Club, to Bridge House Law, to the Zeitgeist Foundation, to the American Council on Germany Warburg Chapter, Charlotte Country Day School, to the Magellan Society, which is the Young Professionals of the World Affairs Council, and to the Young Professionals of International House. We'd also like to uh, express our thanks to the members of the Refounder Circle. These are contributors who are helping us to uh, get started as a new 501c3 organization. Uh, they have provided seed money to make this possible. We express our appreciation. If you would like to join the circle, uh, please visit our website. We'd also like to thank members of our steering committee. Uh, we're fortunate to have 21 members of the Charlotte community who meet monthly, who have established our new bylaws, our new logo, that you see in the upper left and have helped to plan events like this. And very soon, uh, the steering committee will transition into a board and we will become an official association. So thank you to everyone involved. We are a complete volunteer organization. So we appreciate everyone's time and talent. Finally, we invite you to visit our website at www.cltsistercities.org to join us, get involved. Uh, we, we'd love to have you. It's my pleasure right now to introduce someone uh, who's been working with us for the past three months as an intern. Uh, he is a junior at Davidson College, originally from Brooklyn, New York, which I'm very pleased as a native of New Jersey. Uh, as a junior, he is majoring in political science with a minor in philosophy. Uh, he has an incredible list of internships. And, and those of you who might be hiring in a year and a half, you better get started early because Cameron Oliver is exceptional. He's been uh, interning with us and also interning with the office of Congresswoman Alma Adams uh, this semester. Uh, but this night's forum is his internship project. So uh, Cameron, thank you for your work and I will now turn things over to you. Well, thank you for that introduction, Dave. Um, I would like to welcome everyone to the forum tonight um, and thank you for joining us. As Dave mentioned, my name is Cameron Oliver and I have the honor of introducing our opening speaker for the night, former mayor of Charlotte, Harvey Gaunt. Mayor Gaunt has had an incredible career in both architecture and politics spanning decades. Further, Mayor Gaunt's career is one of many firsts. After becoming the first African-American student admitted to, the, to Clemson, he went on to earn his master's from MIT. As a politician, Mayor Gaunt was elected as Charlotte's first black mayor, where he served from 1983 to 1987. During his two terms in office, Mayor Gaunt was essential in fostering and cultivating the city's relationship with Crayfield. Unfortunately, Mayor Gaunt had a previous engagement and was unable to join us tonight, but I was lucky enough to meet him last week and record some words that he wanted to share with the forum. Please enjoy. Hello, I'm Harvey Gant, and I served as mayor of Charlotte in the 1980s, at a time when Charlotte and Krefeld, Germany became sister cities, our third such relationship. The focus of today's forum is Krefeld, and I'm so pleased about that. For during my tenure as mayor, one of the highlights was the relationship we built with Krefeld. 
Meredita Putzhelden and I took seriously this sister city's relationships and the opportunities it presented to us, the sharing of our vision for our, very, our, our respective cities, the insights gained from understanding our different forms of governance, the relationships that we developed with industry and businesses, and the connections we could make in terms of trade in those particular areas, the differences in terms of our city's vision for growth, growth, and of course the cultural exchanges that we enjoyed between our citizens. The highlight of our relationship with Crefeld was the trip we took with more than 100 Charlatans to Krefeld, Germany in 1986. We were welcomed with open arms by Krefeld citizens and enjoyed a full itinerary of tours, festivals, and visits with government and business leaders. I even had my church choir to accompany me on that trip. I'm a member of that choir. And we gave a concert that really was quite memorable. In summary, I guess I'd like to say that I want to believe that those initial connections that we made with Crefell 35 years ago can bear fruit today in reconnecting with that city. The forum you will have, obviously featuring Crefell, should highlight those past relationships and find ways to make connections that will be mutually beneficial to our citizens and their citizens today. I hope you enjoy a great meeting and wish I could be there. I hope everyone enjoyed hearing from Mayor Gaunt about his experiences and the trip he led to Crayfeld. Next, we will hear some words from the mayor of Crayfeld, Frank May. It is a little past one in the morning in Germany, meaning that the mayor was also unable to join us in person, but he wanted to send his regards and express his excitement about the revitalization of this relationship. Please enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends from Charlotte and from North Carolina, I am very happy and I'm kind of proud that all of you take your time to talk about the relationship between Charlotte and Krefeld. And uh, this is very spe special, I think, because in this um, very strange time with the pandemic situation, all about COVID, um, there are a lot of things to do and to talk about. And uh, as I said, you take your time to talk about our two cities and our two countries. I think this is great. And let me say thank you very much for this. Um, the relationship between Charlotte and Krefeld has a history of almost 35 uh, years now. And uh, I think uh, a lot of people, uh, institutions, came in contact uh, across the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, me, uh, I visited Charlotte uh, in 1993, and uh, I still have a uh, um, very good um, feeling when I think about Charlotte and uh, the people I met there and all the impressions I took home with me from Charlotte and all the North Carolina area I visited at that time. And uh, I hope that in the future, a lot of young people get the chance to come personally in contact with people from the United States, from Charlotte here, from Krefeld and the other way around. Uh, I think it's always better to know each other, to uh, learn more about uh, different uh, cultures, languages, and uh, what's all about Charlotte and Krefeld. So please have very good talks and uh, feel free to think about uh, new projects between Krefeld and Charlotte. We are very open for it. Um, we hope to get in contact personally with you. You're all invited to come here and um, the most important thing in these days is stay healthy. Finally, we will hear from Sophia Krott. Sophia was born and raised in Krefeld and still lives there today. At age 15, Sophia studied abroad here in Charlotte and even lived with steering committee member Stacy Hepp and her family. In fact, the Hepps hosted both Sophia and her older sister. Sophia's video will take us on a virtual tour of Krefeld and gives us some insight into life in the city. Please enjoy. Hello, everybody at the forum. My name is Sophia. I'm from Krefeld, and today 
I will take you on this little virtual tour around Krefeld and present you all the facts you need to know about the city. Uh, I really hope you enjoy and let's jump right in. So maybe a little bit about me and why I'm telling you this. Um, I myself had the privilege to go to Charlotte when I was 15 and go to school for six months, uh, get to know the culture and gain a second family. Uh, so yeah, I'm very excited to see you guys kind of reviving the partnership between the cities and very excited to see what comes of this. Uh, unfortunately, as of November, we've been in lockdown again and that's why I can't really take you around the city, but uh, I will still try my best to present you all the facts that you need to know. Krefeld in general is located in North Rhine-Westphalia. We're right at the Rhine River. Um, in between the cities, Cologne, Dusseldorf, Duisburg, that kind of region, and not very far from the Dutch border. Um, we have a population of 230,000, which is a constantly growing number, which is great. Uh, and they're all spread around 19 different districts. Uh, economy in and around Krefeld is very much focused on the chemical industry, the metal industry, and kind of mechanical engineering. Uh, we're around Germany, we're really known as the velvet and silk city. Uh, it's more from our economic past that uh, Krefeld was the place for the textile industry and we kind of dressed Germany, so it's pretty cool. And yeah, but today more focused on like the industrial side. What Krefeld is known for today is the sports, definitely the sports. That's a very big thing in Krefeld culture. We have our KFC Uding, which is the football club in Krefeld. And uh, we're actually playing third league, which is great. They're slowly but surely climbing the league. Um, we have an ice hockey club that uh, I think is still one of the most visited sports events here. Then we have also a field hockey club who even has some players playing in the German national team for field hockey, which is very exciting. So pop culture in Krefeld is very much influenced by the whole art scene. So whether that's theater or music or uh, just art, um, we've been very influenced by that. There is a lot of independent artists um, putting on galleries. We have a lot of art museums as well and a big theater where you can always go to a ballet production, to a theater production or even to an opera if you want to. Yeah, besides that, we also have actually a fairly big kind of music scene. There's always concerts being put on in the Stadtwald, which is our biggest park in Krefeld. Um, we have like a little jazz club in the city. There is a bunch of different things that you can go to. Um, as for the news, what's going on right now, obviously there's a lot of challenges coming with the whole coronavirus situation that the city is dealing with. Um, other than that, I'm sure uh, some of you know that we just re-elected our mayor, who is Frank Mayer. He's with the uh, SPD, so the Social Democratic Party in Germany, and he's been in office for the past five years. Okay, the biggest and kind of best spots to visit, uh, as I already mentioned, the Stadtwald, which is the biggest park in Krefeld is super great. You can just go and take a walk there if you want. Then also the Krefeld Zoo is really big and super beautiful. They've really made it a great space for the animals. Another thing is the Burg Linn, which is located in Linn, another district. Linn is kind of very, uh, still very much an old town. So they have beautiful buildings, beautiful streets. And the Brooklyn has some beautiful markets going on all year and they put on this great castle Christmas market which just looks beautiful in winter. Yes, that is it for my little video about Krefeld. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you could take something away from it. And yeah, I wish you a very great day and all the best from Krefeld. Bye bye. All right. Thank you very much uh, to Cameron for organizing uh, those presentations. Thank you to City Hall, to Alexis Gordon for helping us uh, with uh, receiving a video from the mayor of Krefeld. Uh, thank you to Sophia 
uh, for her participation in putting that video together, and of course to Mayor Harvey Gunt. We uh, we appreciate those introductions. And now it is time to begin the uh, the highlight of this forum, which is the panel. And to introduce our moderator, uh, I would like to invite the director of the Citizen Diplomacy Program at International House. International House, of course, uh, once housed Charlotte Sister Cities and Janelle Coswell has been a part of the reemergence of Sister Cities uh, since we started this process 14 months ago. Welcome, Janelle. Thank you so much, David. It, it really is an honor and a pleasure to introduce Mr. Reinhard von Hennigs. Reinhardt has been a pillar of the international community here in Charlotte for many years. He is the chairman and founder of Bridgehouse Law, LLP, a North Carolina-based law firm with offices in the United States, Canada, and Germany. He is admitted to practice law as an attorney in the USA, Germany, the Republic of Georgia, as well as with the United States Supreme Court. Reinhardt has been an ardent supporter of citizen diplomacy. He has hosted many, many government, business, arts, uh, education delegations for us, for the State Department over the, over the years that I have known him. He has even volunteered to host a German business etiquette session for our young professionals. Reinhardt has been recognized with numerous accolades and awards for his work in the international community, including the Mayor's International Community Award. Reinhardt has over 25 years of experience in the international legal business community, and he regularly speaks with leaders of government and business associations on important developments in international law. He has presented to chambers of commerce, trade associations, and universities in both the United States and Germany. Reinhardt regularly advises globally operating companies on market entry strategies. He works primarily in the foreign direct investment and he works strategically with clients to establish legal structures that address the business needs of the client as well as immigration, tax liability, and regulatory considerations. Mr. Von Hennigs is also an accomplished author. He has recently published his book on musings, his musings to do with international trade, law, and anything to do and all to do with international business. Uh, he is going to be your moderator this evening, and it is my pleasure to have him join us. Reinhardt. Thank you, Janelle. Wow, what an introduction. I feel like I either grow a little bit more or I kind of like have a holy halo on top of myself. Thank you for the kind words. Thank you to the committee to invite me. Thanks, Dave, for reaching out to me to moderate this. And I said immediately yes, because I'm excited to share this Krefeld Charlotte story with you to push it forward, to bring it forward one inch, to make sure that we do have a living relationship between those two cities because sister city relationships just as plaques on walls are not the desire at least not my desire and i hope we all share the same desire to have a living a personal a one-on-one -on -one, a very individual relationship with the sister cities and therefore i was very excited to be called up today for this moderation i do have couple of ideas along the line. And one is, I may ask a little question and I'm really curious to challenge all of you about your creativity and feel free to chat the answers in. And before I kind of like introduce the first person, which would be Diane St. John to continue to introduce somebody else. Let me just pop one question up. We heard from Sophia that there are so many sports enthusiasts in Krefeld, but how many sports teams, how many sports clubs are there in Krefeld? How many sports are being played? Is it one because it's only soccer? Is it 42 sports or is it 209 sports? Please hit the numbers in the chat and I'll share the result later on. With that said, Diane St. John, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to say five. Um, I'm here to introduce Ingeborg Arnick, and may, may, many of you may already know her because she's been here a long time since moving to 
from Germany to the United States with her family in 1972. She's been very involved in connecting Charlottians with Germans. She created the uh, Alemannia German Society and the German School in the 1970s, and has been very active in International House uh, since the 80s. In fact, it was her relationship with International House that led her to sister cities. And Ingeborg is responsible for creating, suggesting and helping to create the relationship between Charlotte and Crayfield that we have now. She also serves as the host and city ambassador for Charlotte's couch surfing community and occasionally hosts long distance bicyclists. She's truly an internationalist. Welcome to the panel, Ingeborg. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you, Diane, for the nice introduction. Uh, I was formerly a part of Sister Cities, and now I'm delighted to be once again uh, a part of it again mm, with you all. Um, it looks I'm the oldest on the panel, as I see, but I love the technologies and people. And Zoom is a great way to create meetings and communities all over the world, like couch surfing, <laughs> and in the comfort of our own home. I will not bore you with the details of history and why Crayfeld, etc. Uh, but uh, in uh, short, the it, in short, it will be textiles, uh, what I'm referring to. Most uh, of the German companies in the 70s in Charlotte were textile machine technologies and our uh, husbands who were running those German owned companies here in Charlotte. And then there was um, uh, in the 80s, uh, Millie Cox. Uh, at the International House, and she convinced me to get involved with Sister Cities, and so I did. I'm happy to uh, participate in the Q&A, and thanks. Beautiful. Thank you, Ingeborg. It's great to kind of like go back in history and connect to the initial ideas behind the Sister City or the Städte Partnerschaft, how it would be called. It is now my great honor to ask Jane Zimmerman to join the team and to introduce Algonary. Thank you so much, Reinhard. This evening, I am delighted to introduce Al Guarnieri. As a partner at Parker Poe Attorneys and Counselors at Law, Mr. Garnieri brings more than 30 years of experience in international business, site selection, economic development, and mergers and acquisitions. He represents a range of US and foreign corporations and has particular experience with manufacturing and distribution companies. Mr. Guarnieri is also a civic leader. He's the director of the Charlotte chapter of the American Council on Germany, and he serves on the leadership team of the German American Chamber of Commerce in its North Carolina chapter. The honors bestowed upon him include the Harold P. Josephson Award from the World Affairs Council of Charlotte in recognition for his significant contributions to the council and the international life of the community. So please join me in welcoming Al Garnieri. Thank you, Jane. I appreciate it very much. Uh, just wanna take a, a couple minutes briefly to, uh, to give a few thoughts as we then move into the, to the Q&A. But uh, in addition to practicing international law, I do spend a, a fair bit of time with the American Council on Germany in heading up the Charlotte chapter of the ACG. Uh, many of you on the, uh, on the Zoom program may know about the ACG, but it was formed following World War II in 1958 to strengthen, uh, reestablish and strengthen German-American ties. Uh, today, we work to facilitate a deeper mutual understanding of transatlantic issues. And, uh, and that's, that's our, our goal and our focus. Charlotte is one of 21 chapters of the ACG, and, and uh, until COVID, we, we were a very active chapter, uh, bringing 10 to 15 speakers a year, most of whom came from Germany, to talk about the hot issues of the day. 
whether that was the refugee crisis, populism, the energy vendor, uh, you know, a whole range of, of issues. And I'm also very happy to that we coordinate with other organizations in our community. We get these speakers out to the high schools, to the community colleges, uh, to the universities, so that we're, we're spreading the word, we're promoting dialogue. And, and that's what the ACG is about, and, and I've been happy to be, to be part of that. The part of the reason I bring that up is that uh, we facilitated uh, about a month ago a conversation between the mayors of Charlotte and Crayfeld. And uh, that was an opportunity for uh, our mayors to have a dialogue about the types of issues that the cities are experiencing and, and dealing with, how they see the future and so on. And uh, not only was that interesting, but it was particularly interesting to see many of the similarities of, of opportunities and challenges that, that they're dealing with. These kind of discussions reflect a piece of, of Charlotte and German relations. And, and as Ingeborg mentioned, it, uh, I've always viewed and, and I've always heard over the years that, you know, Charlotte, in Germany, that relationship is built on business. Um, and it, it goes back to the textile days and it continues today. And, uh, you know, the stories I had heard was that one of the, the German textile uh, folks, Klaus Nimps, basically said, you know, we should have a sister city relationship between Krefeld and Charlotte. And I don't know if that, how, how true that is, but that's what I've always heard and uh, I always viewed him as a, as a driving force uh, of this relationship uh, in those days. Um, that kind of business connection in my mind is more important than ever. Um, it's, it's, to me, it's as, it's as important and probably more so than, than in, in 1985. Um, the German community 215 German companies in the Charlotte region employing 20,000 people. Uh, that's the business bond. And our sister city is a piece of that relationship in that community. Uh, there are two companies from Krefeld that I know of that are, that are operating here in Charlotte, Simple Comp and Butna. Um, and they're headquartered in Krefeld. You have the Trutzler Group out of Mönchengladbach nearby that was one of the early textile entrants into the uh, into the community, so I, I raise this just in the context of a of a broader scope. Um, there's many organizations, uh, many of whom are supporting this evening. Sorry, um, and you know whether it's the ACG or the Zeitgeist Foundation with Klaus or the German American Language and Cultural Foundation. There's plenty of organizations. The Sister Cities is part of that, that fabric of our community. And, and that's what we're here to talk about tonight. And I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you, Al, for highlighting the fabric. I think we can spin this fabric forward with no pun intended when we talk about textile cities. So brilliant, brilliant thoughts. It is now my honor to ask Stacy Hepp on the floor to introduce Lucy Hepp. Hey, Reinhardt, thank you very much. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce Lucy Hepp. She's a senior at Myers Park High School. Um, she's super involved in quite a few clubs. Uh, she was in the acapella group there. Um, she's, a, she's one of the senior editors for the yearbook. Um, she's in Odyssey of the Mind. Uh, she's very busy and she decided that she would like to be an exchange student after we hosted um, two of the girls from Krefeld, Sophia and Nadia. Um, they really became like sisters for her. And she decided about a year and a half ago, almost two years ago to, to drop IB so that she could go in um, to do a st study abroad for the six months. So it is my honor to introduce Lucy Hepp that we are very proud of. Hi, thank you, mom, for the introduction. Um, as my mom mentioned, I'm a senior at Myers Park High School, and I spent my last semester in Krefeld, Germany. I attended the Gymnasium Fabrizianum, 
Um, and I lived in the village of Tra in the village of Febeg, um, which are both just outside of Krefeld. I took 10 classes, uh, uh, 10 classes and was able to, to attend school up until March and uh, once the pandemic hit, uh, then classes were virtual. I then was able to study more of the German language with my host family at the time and spent a lot of quarantine trying all different kinds of German foods, beverages, while also diving into the German culture. Once the quarantine was lifted, I would bike to school into the, um, into the city or to go see friends. Uh, my friends and I spent a lot of our time in Meerbusch, where the Bezier was, which is a lake, um, or we go to the Stadtwald, which was a very popular place to hang out. Um, I was very impressed with the way the pandemic was handled in Germany um, and the way that everyone uh, cooperated. Despite the pandemic, I really enjoyed my experience there and hope to go back possibly through an internship or university once the current events allow. Thank you, Lucy. It is probably the story you did not tell. How did you come back and how did it all work out in detail? But well, that's something to share at a different time, I assume. But thank you for being on the panel tonight. I would like to phrase, before I start phrasing questions, give the quick answer away. And if there would be a winner, it would be Maria Vinci. 209 sports are played in Krefeld in 258 clubs. I could not believe it when I did this research that there are 258 sports clubs in Krefeld with 209 different sports. If I were to imagine how many sports there are, I think really of soccer and soccer. But hey, I need to visit Krefeld, obviously, to learn more about sports. But let's start digging a little bit deeper into the sister city relationship. We have heard about 35 years of history of the sister city relationship and what amazing impact it had for exchange visitors as well as on businesses. How can Charlotte on the one hand and Krefeld on the other hand build on the history and what challenges do you see in today's climate to overcome? I would open the floor to ever feels most inclined to talk about that. Ingeborg, maybe you? Well, I think um, sports most definitely is one thing, but I do think um, the uh, combination of where we are right now with the virus, we could start with Zoom meetings to even create some people on the other side and, um, and, and encourage it that we do have a lively connection. Um, I think sports is one of this, with soccer perhaps coming to Charlotte. I don't know, somebody else. I don't know who else on here. So what I hear from you is to suggest that the famous Uerdingen team should make a friendly match against our newly created soccer team in Charlotte. Yes, why not? I think it would be a great connection because uh, sports and music and culture is always one thing I think who really in school exchanges, you know, live school exchanges uh, as school starts again uh, with Zooming. I think this would be a great connection. Beautiful, Ingeborg. Lucy, you just got back from Krefeld. What do you think about the climate to exchange more or when is the next exchange happening? Um, I think maybe to open more possibilities for exchange, you could create ties with schools. So then that would be a direct exchange through like the youth. Um, that's all I can think of is through schools and make it more direct. The schools. That's a great idea. I thought, Al, you wanted to take a deep breath to answer. I cut you off. Sorry for that. Uh, uh, it, it's somewhat along the same, same lines. I, I think you have you have sort of the sports and culture and arts, you have education and schools, you have business. And, you know, one thing that I've noticed is that the fact that, you know, we have here in Charlotte, uh, the, the committee that is focusing on sister cities. I mean, that, that's the first step in reinvigorating not only Crayfield, but our sister cities generally. We need energy. We need people who are energized to do it. I think the schools that, like Lucy was saying, is a great way to expose young people to the, the cultural and, and language uh, opportunities. And we can link that with, even during COVID, with what Ingeborg was saying, which is, we, you know, we can do uh, Zoom relationships at, at the school level and then personal exchange as well. 
Now that takes energy, it takes commitment by people, it takes funding, and, and that's part of what has to be, be developed, so to speak. Okay, brilliant. We heard that Mayor Gant had lots of enthusiasm. And actually when I watched the video, I felt it's great to see that somebody who did a great thing like a sister city relationship 35 years ago still feels strong about that. Who can say 35 years later, I'm still proud about what I did 35 years ago. But the question I have is, do you feel the same enthusiasm in sister city relationship in the current city leadership? And if not, what can we do to enhance this enthusiasm? And maybe Al, you would like to take the first run. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think on that, half of it is, is educating and, and making our city leaders aware of, of the value that, that say a sister cities can bring. Um, I think most of our city leadership is, is well aware of the, the importance of our German relationship generally. But uh, I, think, I think it's partly an educational piece and then showing the commitment of our community and that we need the city to step up as well and support it in, in various ways. Great. Thank you, Al. I also would like to welcome everybody who participates today to put questions in the Q&A section. We do have the great tool on Zoom so if you go on the lower board, you see a Q&A button. If you click on that, you have an opportunity to feed your questions in. And I already see there are a couple of questions being populated. So the first question comes in from Emmanuel Adam. Would be interesting to learn from Lucy how Krefeld embraced the first lockdown in March. How did it go? How did people react? And how did the people handle it differently over there to here in Charlotte? That is a big question. Um... I think everyone was shocked, um, and but I wasn't here. I, I was not in Charlotte during the pandemic, but uh, what I heard from my parents was, I think it was a smoother transition over in Crayfield um, within going into lockdown. Um, there was much more cooperation. Um, and I think um, with like wearing the mask and social distancing, I think they, got that under control very quickly. Um, I was actually able to go and attend back um, um, and attend school physically uh, by May. So it was, it was under control, um, so. Thanks Lucy for sharing that. I think there are good stories to tell and the story to be in lockdown in Germany when you're in an exchange program is a story by itself. I wonder what did you see of Germany? Al, I do have one question for you. You mentioned the business ties are relevant and how Klaus Nims, a former business leader in Charlotte, created those ties or felt it was important. How can right now the current business ties or maybe even future business ties which need to be created help the sister city relationship? Yeah, I, I would, I view the business ties as being sort of interconnected with, with the sister city relationship. Although textiles is different today than it was back then, it remains an important piece to, to our region and, and to our history. Um, and economic development for our region continues to focus on Germany uh, overall. So I think the sister city relationship can be a piece to our overall German relationship and, and, and I think our business, German-owned companies and, and so on can, can be part of that. I'm not sure if that's a great answer, but that's, that's how I'd probably approach it. Great. Thank you, Al. I get two different questions out and somehow even answers. And maybe, Ingeborg, you could help us out here. How did the two cities found out about each other? And uh, Kurt Waldhausen, the former Honorary Consul, said Trutschler. I believe this was the answer to that. So Ingeborg, what is your memory? How did the two wow. cities find each other? Well, yeah, Klaus Nimitz from, from, uh, from uh, uh, what was he? From Falkmann as such, uh, he was, uh, uh, did uh, force it more or less um, because, you know, in textiles, and I do remember my husband 
my late husband as such, um, they were making great buddies and they made it up at uh, some flights for and back and they thought that would be a great idea to have him as a sister city as the Silk City, the connection of textiles. Aachen is closed for the northern part of the textile school and um, you know a few more drinks and I think that thing was uh, more or less at I think the second flight or third flight together uh, for some back that I think how it was created. But I think as the direction of um, companies who were at that time um, uh, popular, it started at Mulberry Road Exit, where Zinza, that was a company my husband uh, ran, and then came Fleissner, then came Volkmann and Schlafhorst and Trutschler who bought bots and I think Fleissner and Sauer has now all the other companies together. So all the buyouts are at this time, I think, uh, I don't really know that much about uh, uh, who is what and where, but I think uh, business as such uh, should be one of the major things. And then for internships, uh, I think internships would be a great way for uh, young people to participate. Beautiful, I almost feel when I'm changing my head right now to be back the chair of the International Cabinet in Charlotte, that we almost need to have a little cheat sheet to say those are the ideas which we developed today in dear sister city relationship on the one hand, but also city leadership. Take those into consideration, because it's brilliant to, to push this relationship forward. I got one question over there. What you guys feel is the most astonishing thing in Krefeld? And maybe Lucy, you can talk about that. What was most astonishing to you? Um, I think the public transportation, um, it was very accessible and unlike um, here in the US, it is a lot more commonly used. Um, and the fact that we were able to bike everywhere and the Stadtwald, that was, I think the most astonishing thing to me because it was right in the city and it's this huge park that has a lake in it and it has a, um, shoot, what's it called? Um, I totally forgot, but you you have many different activities that are available, and I think that gives the city a lot of character. Great. We talked about schools, we talked about universities, and one question comes down is that universities in the Krefeld area are out for offering volunteer op opportunities for schools in the CMS area, such as language immersion schools the South Academy of International Languages, formerly known as Waddell Academy, and the new LI schools are opening in the northern part of the country. So I take this question more as an action plan is to have more of those opportunities, or does anybody feel there is a good answer for the language component of schooling? Or should I phrase it like that? Is it important to know a different language than your native language? Yeah, absolutely. I do believe the language and, and uh, to create, especially the German language as such, uh, uh, has been a little bit neglected. I think uh, the Goethe Institute uh, used to be a little bit more active, but I think uh, language enforcement uh, would be great. And I'm glad we still have a few left. We used to have a uh, elementary, Bruns Avenue, what was very active uh, as a elementary school. And that created a lot of interest because out of that group really um, there are some city council people came about and especially also with the exchange into Krefeld uh, with um, uh, uh, people from the Friendship Baptist Choir accompanied at that time Maya Gant. Um, people arose out of that because they're very, very close to, to the German community. And I really enjoy that still this day that we can, um, we need to force our language in this area. Also Central Piedmont, they need to, the language groups at UNCC International Festival. There are so many uh, things we could uh, hitch onto in the city to be more active and visible. Thanks Ingeborg. I could only echo that. I think languages are important. And going back to what the mayor said, it enables people to people communication. Can you imagine the American group would be greeted with only German speakers, nobody spoke English. 100 folks stranded would not really work. And I can see it the other way around. 
So here's one question which came to L. How could Charlotte become even more attractive to Germans and German businesses in the future? Is there an ambition in Charlotte to attract German business? We noted that the info signs at the airport are in German. Mm -hmm. Used to be. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think Charlotte is extremely attractive uh, for German companies today. Uh, there's a lot of competition out there and, and for those active in the economic development sphere, uh, it's quite clear that there's, there's plenty of good options for the German companies, particularly I think in the Southeast. Um, so for Charlotte itself, maintaining what traditionally I viewed as a lead in our skills initiative and our apprenticeship programs is, is critical. We have to keep that at, at the gold standard. Um, and we need to enhance the skills that, that say our, our younger people may have, including kids going into apprenticeship programs. Those are two things that German companies actively look for. Um, as a community and with our German community, you know, in existence today, I think we're well positioned to, to, to be welcoming, uh, show, show all of our attributes and so on. But I think skills, apprenticeship programs, uh, education aspects are, are really critical to attracting particularly German companies uh, to, to our area. Perfect. Thanks, Al. I also would like to point out that the question and answer section gives you a chance to vote up. So I've seen a couple of comments being voted up and I also see one added up, good question. So how about I go to the good question question from Quanta Dawn Light. What is the cultural and social exchange program are being considered for the future between the two cities? What cultural and social exchange programs are being considered? And I'm not sure that this panel is the right group to answer about what's being considered, but let's phrase it like that. What do you think would be helpful or share if you know of what's considered? I, mean, I would just add that I, I do think the educational piece at the high school or university level or even uh, teacher professor exchanges would be something that I, I would encourage both cities to, to look at. Um, I, I think that would be a, a relatively lower hanging fruit, so to speak, of, of options. Um, but I'm not sure what at this stage uh, either city is, is working on, to be quite frank. Thanks, Al. I think it's a great segue over to Helga Holmes' question, who used to run the Alemannia Society, the German Cultural Club, and who asked the question, how can a German club in Charlotte get involved, and perhaps not only business connections, but also to create friendships? I would say, let's start with Zoom meetings to create something, because we need to see who is really interested in Crayford. What I hear, Ingeborg, is have the Alemannia Society make a joint Zoom meeting with the steering committee of the sister city and mm -hmm. develop some synergies. Right. I do believe right now in this time, this COVID around, um, Zoom is the way to go. Beautiful. Helga, please carry this to your group. Have the Alemannia make a Zoom meeting. How about that? The question I see right now is voted up as what is the most popular food in Krefeld? I think, Lucy, you're the best person to answer that with your recent experience. What's most uh, festival in March of 2020? Okay, I would say Turkish food is very popular. Um, and the traditional like schnitzel, that is also very popular. And I would have to say um, at least kids my age were big fans of frozen yogurt. That's what we'd go to get after school. So that was another very popular food. Perfect. And Lucy, while I agree Turkish food is good stuff because it's all over available, but maybe you can help us to, to explain what kind of Turkish food is it? What are the tastes? How is it made? Um, and give us a couple of names. So you have a duna or a dona, um, and it's kind of like, it's almost like pita bread with beef. It's, I'm not sure how to explain it. 
it's lettuce and just a bunch of different stuff piled into a pita bread and it's super big and it's really hard to eat. So that's also very popular in the youth and sometimes my host family would get it for dinner. Um, and kebabs, that was another big um, Turkish food that people would enjoy. Um, it's kind of like a duna, but it's just longer and it's also big. <laughs> Beautiful. I almost feel like we should have a, a Turkish restaurant in, in Charlotte so we can all go and have a duna now. Well, one thing I would like to add to it, duna is great, but I think also the, we used to have city exchanges also with the um, fanfaren core and city uh, festivals. And I think this kind of thing that they have great, uh, because carnival is one of their big things in the Rhine Valley. And we were invited for a, a carnival exchange and cultural uh, uh, painting exchange. Um, and it was great fun. And we had a big delegation going. But I think they are fun, light living people, more or less, in Krefeld. And um, uh, they like to have a good time. So I think one needs to combine that a little bit if you think about uh, uh, cultural exchange because carnival is their culture. And carnival is the so called fifth season in the. Right. <laughs> which is almost like for, for um, when I started to go to the University of Bonn, somebody told me it's the beginning of the carnival season. I should go shopping for the week because there will be no groceries, which I could not believe, only to realize that the fifth season really leads you to a <laughs> shutdown of everything. So if carnival is so important for Krefeld, how about creating a carnival society here and make a carnival exchange? Does it work? <laughs> Uh, good luck. Uh, now, I, I, yeah, I mean, we used to have it in the Alemannia where I was president. Uh, we had uh, uh, carnival uh, with our yearly program. Yes. Um, I don't know uh, how many Germans are at this time active still in this and uh, the Rhinelanders are such from the companies who are still here. But you really need to start as a co company's corporation. They need to pitch in and they come up and see up they want to interact uh, because we are so quickly integrated here uh, that the interest is not really anymore there to belong to groups or uh, this kind of direction. We need to use a new technology and uh, the fun part because pa people like to party, right? And that's what they are missing, right? Eating out and partying, right? Eating out. Which is a perfect segue for another question I saw from Quanta Dawn Light, a Turkish citizen who said, I'm excited mm -hmm. that Turkish food is claimed today, Quanta, I can see that. However, what is the real local German food which is favorite there? And I think, Lucy, you said schnitzel, but what else is out there? Um, Rheinischer Sauerbraten? There is schnitzels, there is pretzels, um, there's always the beer garden. Um, one of my favorite foods for breakfast was I would get um, ein, uh, ein Brötchen, I, um, a bread bowl from the bakery, and I'd get a Lebewurst and spread it on it and eat it for breakfast. So that was another, I guess, local German food. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure if Krefeld itself had any like individual um, local German foods. I think it was all pretty like universal German food. Perfect. Leberwurstbrötchen almost makes me makes me think about where can we get a good Brötchen here in Charlotte. Right. <laughs> a business opportunity. Back to the business thoughts, L. Right. How about we open a German bakery in town, and all of a sudden it's a motor and a business engine. It, it, is, to... it has been a lot of years where people have continued to say that. <laughs> well. well we just had that occurring in the uh, next door neighbor. They wanted to buy out a property to put in a European bakery and grocery store right in my neighborhood, Colony and Ray. So, you know, there is some interest because we are having more people coming from up north down here and they're all like good bread. And bread and sausages, I think, is one way of uh, finding it. Right now, we can only find it really at the Polish shop. 
uh, or, you know, it's a Bosnian shop. Uh, that is where we find our sausages. But where, other than that, here is Tito, so where it is overpriced, I don't, you know, interesting. So at this time, I can only say thank you, Ingeborg. Thank you, Al. Thank you, Lucy, for your presentations, for your participation. I learned a lot, and I'm pretty sure everybody who participated today learned a lot from you, or they may I even dare to say y'all. It is great to get thoughts around the people to people component. And when I listened to Mayor Gant, how he highlighted the component of bringing 100 people from Charlotte, including a church choir. This means preaching to a choir at a complete different dimension. But to have 100 people from Charlotte visiting Krefeld in order to celebrate something for me is incredible. It is hard to imagine, but I can only see this could be a goal. When I listen to the Mayor Frank Meyer, how he raised the thoughts about people to people connections again. When I hear right now how food and sports are important, I believe a sister city ship could be done on a very low hanging fruit basis, no pun intended, in getting food together, getting people together, and getting fun together. Those of you who speak German may have seen the tagline behind the mayor, which was creative, innovative, and open to the world. And I believe what we are right now doing here in Charlotte is to show how much we are open to the world. It is now my great honor to introduce Klaus Becker. Klaus Becker is a living example of a business leader in our community. And Klaus came to Charlotte many, many years ago with the idea of making Charlotte not only his home, but a better place to live. Charlotte was on Klaus's heart for many years after he was involved in the steel business and in the steel industry. And I could say Klaus is the entrepreneur of steel at a certain level and steel is sometimes something which binds us together. But by the same token, Klaus created great audiences through his networking, through his salons, through his speaking engagements, be it in private settings or be it in public settings. And always unforgettable is it to really have a great exchange of minds and like-minded peoples. Lastly, Klaus is the honorary consul of the Federal Republic of Germany for the Western Carolinas. And with that said, Klaus, I welcome you to the floor. The floor is all yours. Reinhard, what can I say? You know, what a lovely introduction. I, I could not have written it better myself, you know. Uh, it's, it's really very hard to follow such a lively discussion, such a, such a discussion of innovative ideas um, with some remarks. And therefore, I just want to take perhaps time for one or two minutes to put it a little bit into a bigger context. Yeah, we times have been changing after four years of difficult transatlantic times um, between the administrations, between the United States and Germany, between the United States and Europe. You know, I think there might be some easing. I think we all have the feeling that uh, times are changing a little bit and uh, that the toxicity uh, vanishes slowly. And I, I think there are good chances that the whole political countryside will, will change a little bit. You know, I, I would assume that there are good chances that the United States uh, join the Paris Climate Agreement again. I think there might be very good chances that the United States engage themselves again more constructively in the World Trade Organization and the World Health Organization, both organizations, multilateral organizations, which they have helped to be formed at the end of the 40s, beginning of the 50s, and to revitalize them. And perhaps, yeah, who knows, perhaps we can get back into the Iran agreement even and, and uh, start discussions like that. In my opinion, and, and L has pointed that out, that the main thing is, in my opinion, is the economic engine. If people are working together, and we see that very clearly in Europe, if they work together, they live together in peace, they develop other civic relations, and that is the most important thing if the political 
uh, uh, countryside allows it. And I think we should try to, to reinforce the, you know, North Rhine-Westphalia, Krefeld is in the middle of uh, North Rhine-Westphalia. North Rhine-Westphalia with 17 million people is the most populous uh, state in, in Germany. And we have so few companies here. There is such a potential which we could develop and I think we should take that as a locomotive. And, and, and after all, we should not forget one thing. Let, let me just put the whole thing a little bit into a perspective. I, I know we're talking about uh, uh, Charlotte and Krefeld today, but there is also Mooresville and, and Hockenheim. There is also Altenburg, you know, with Hickory and uh, Gotha with, with Gastonia. You know, we don't want to forget that, but there is more to the whole thing. If, if you take your left hand and cup it around, let's say, let's say uh, 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 Greenville, and on the right side you have uh, uh, Charlotte, you have 5 million people living there. And this is the heartland of the German industry and trade. There are a multitude of, of German huge companies like Bosch, Bosch Rexroth, ZF, BMW, of course, Drexelmeyer, Continental Tire. You know, uh, there, there is Scheffler, uh, there's Siemens, of course, and there is a, a huge multitude of the famous German uh, Mittelstands companies. So this is the heartland. People don't know that. They always think, you know, the German industry is in Michigan or in California or whatever. Now they are here, the, the concentration is here in our area. And we should use that as a locomotive to tie ties with interested people in, in other states, for example, with the mayor of, of uh, uh, Krefeld and see what can we do for companies over there to do some good business here and vice versa, of course. You know, and this, everything else will follow afterwards. You know, the languages will follow, the apprenticeship program will follow, uh, not to mention the collaborative of, of 30, 30 uh, community colleges in our area, ranging from, from Virginia to Georgia, yeah, who can provide the workforce. It is an El Dorado for German companies to do business here. And I, I appreciate all the efforts like the sister city, sister city uh, 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 efforts. We saw that with how much love and diligence uh, people introduced and, and invested in, into these projects. And we should by all means um, uh, follow through with that, yeah. Um, concluding, I wish you the energy and the success to put the sister city concept on lively feet again, which will enable many intercultural uh, encounters in the future. I myself, I'm a product of that. You know, I early on, I met with a different nation and I fell in love with that. And I saw how valuable that is. Nothing is better than that. And we should support that. And thank you very much for your attention. Well, thank you to the honorary Klaus Becker for offering us those ideas. I know you've given us all a lot to think about. This marks the end of our Krefeld Forum, the second of seven such events celebrating the relationships with all of our sister cities. I want to take a moment to thank our moderator, all of our panelists, those who gave introductions, and our closing speaker for an incredible event. I'd also like to thank Ms. Jessie Herman. Without her help, we would not be able to share this evening with everyone. Finally, thank you to all the Charlotte Sister Cities members who played a part in making this night happen. And thank you to everyone for joining us tonight. I certainly learned a lot and I hope you all did as well. With that, I will just say, please remember to visit our website and consider joining us at Sister Cities. It's open to everyone and we're always looking for new members. Dave. And I'd like to say thank you to Cameron. Uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, this forum was his internship project. He did a lot of the research. I uh, created some of the films that you saw earlier. So thank you, Cameron, for representing Davidson College. 
representing Charlotte Sister City so well. We look forward to hearing great news about your future and we hope your future will stay involved with uh, Charlotte Sister Cities. I'd also like to put on everyone's calendar the date May 23rd, 2021. That date celebrates the 35th anniversary of the signing of the partnership between, uh, of the sister city relationship between Krefeld and Charlotte. So we'll be celebrating the first 35 years, which we covered tonight. And then we're gonna begin planning for the next 35 years. And we hope that you'll be a part of that and helping to build a stronger relationship between the two communities. We'd also like to invite everyone to attend our next forum, which will be on, Jan on Wednesday, January 13th, when we will recognize our sister city relationship with Baoding, China. Uh, we'd like to put out a reminder that, uh, and an invitation to join the Charlotte Sister Cities Scholars Program. After, this, uh, after we finish this recording, uh, we will send out a questionnaire uh, to everyone, a, a form to fill out. If you fill out this form for all seven of our forums, uh, you will become a Charlotte Sister Cities Scholar, receive a certificate, recognition on our website. So we hope you'll consider uh, being involved in the Scholars Program. Thank you once again to Jesse Herman for working behind the scenes and to the World Affairs Council for hosting tonight's event. Thank you to the steering committee, uh, to all of our sponsors who have been involved in the success of this evening. And I'll put their names up one last time. Uh, we appreciate you being with us this evening and we hope that you will visit our website and get involved. So have a wonderful evening. We look forward to seeing you at our next forum on January 13th. Have a good evening.